Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Cruz. Welcome back to Culture Code. I'm so excited because our guest today is the Chief People Officer of One Password, Katya Laviolette. Katya, welcome, and where are you joining from today? Oh, thank you, Kevin. I'm joining from the beautiful city of Montreal in Canada. Wonderful. Normally I'm uh, in the beautiful city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No jokes, it really is a beautiful city. But I'm uh, I'm spending some time in California, so I'm 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 a bit away from you these days. Very nice. Let's start because I mentioned before we recorded. Um, we're actually Lead LeadX is a customer of One Password. Millions. And you'll tell me how many people. I mean, so many people use One Password. But let's assume there's some people listening that aren't familiar with your company. So in plain language, what do you guys do? How big are you? Tell us about the company. Sure. Um... Well, we, we like to say that we really do protect people and businesses online um, and really we're an identity security solution company. So what does that mean in plain language? Um, the core product that we have and obviously expanding is password management. So in layperson's terms, you probably have, I don't know, I think I have like 300, 400 passwords and um, you know they're not necessarily catch you one, two, three. So basically, uh, we produce something that is um, a technology that encrypts your passwords, and we've moved into uh, passwordless, which is our our latest um, our latest journey, uh, which combines uh, biometrics. So at the end of the day, you really don't need to uh, log in all your passwords on a Google Sheet. Um, and obviously, really moving into different products, we have vaults to protect um, to protect. Uh, uh, documents and, and special things that matter to people's lives. And we are basically a consumer and a business um, product company, uh, bootstrapped company uh, started 18 years ago by four founders uh, just outside the Toronto area. Uh, our CEO joined us uh, just over a decade ago. In 2019, uh, I'd say we were just over 100 em employees uh, within Canada and some other individuals spread across the globe. And then we got our first series of funding, Series A, then Series B, and then Series C uh, in January 2022. Uh, and just uh, two weeks ago, we hired our 1,000th bit, as we call our employees. Uh, we have uh, grown immensely. We're in five countries now. Uh, we've moved into kind of the multi-product. We're on a number of platforms, uh, and we have lots of plans for the future. Wow, what uh, what a success story. So I'm sitting right now physically in San Jose, California, Silicon Valley, and most people around here would make you uh, would let you believe that all great companies are, are birthed in Silicon Valley. So it's nice to know there's this incredible tech story from outside the valley. How about that? That is a great thing to say. We're super proud to be, um, I would say, Canadian uh, founded, uh, but obviously we have a super um, influence within, uh, I'd say, kind of Silicon Valley or the tech space. Uh, but we we are what I, what I would say is one of kind of the unicorns in Canada from a tech perspective. So it's uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, our Canadian roots are also very, very important to us. That's great. So we're here, obviously, to talk about your your great corporate culture and um, uh, even just the definition of culture, a lot of people will struggle it or they'll say, I know great culture when I see it. But I, I want to challenge you. I mean, how would you describe your your culture to an outsider? Well, we are, um, when I, I joined, I joined about 18 months ago. We were at 500 employees. So obviously we've doubled, uh, doubled since then. Probably we'll uh, start the year around 1,200 or so. Um, and the culture is very entrenched. Um, but when you scale, you bring in an, a large number of people, you build out functions and so forth. And you want to make sure that you, I would say, in my own words, codify uh, and document the culture. So what we did um, last summer as we brought a really kind of cross-functional, diverse group groups of individuals together with the founders. And we asked them, you know, let's, let's put this on paper. What does our culture mean to us? And we came up with very... Um, it was actually quite funny. We, we came up our first, our first, uh, and this actually describes a bit of our culture. Uh, we came up with our first subset and, and one of the, one of the founders was like, that's kind of really corporate speak, Katya. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I get that. I get that. So we went back and we came up really with just very, very three really clear values. Keep it simple, lead with honesty and put people first. And since then we've been delineating and, and putting, I call it meat to the bones and really 
talking about, well, what behaviors drive those values and how do those run through um, how we do things? So it's one thing to be able to perform and say, I have done this or the what, but we wanna know how you do it. So it's kind of ensuring that you have both axes and you know, you could be a stellar employee, but you have to do it within our values. So that's values-based leadership. So that's really the underpinning um, from a cultural perspective. So it's a, what a fantastic exercise. And now though, you've got these new cultural pillars. The, the pillars are new and all these new people are coming in. So you know, what are some of the ways you're teaching people and, and sustaining this, this culture throughout? Yeah, well, it's interesting because we, we are a remote or a distributed company, 18 years in the making. So we're not one of those COVID companies that basically, you know, I say, uh, so from the evening before to the, the day after, they just, you know, you all go home, you grab your screens and your, your computers and you roll your chairs home and you work from home. It was never like that for one password. It was the inception. It was, it was a remote first company. So we're actually bringing people in to a remote first environment who have really worked in a face-to-face -face office environment. And so you're blending those two. So it was really important that we are very intentional about our activities um, and our initiatives uh, from a, I guess, human perspective. So we do an annual kickoff. Uh, we've been, been doing it for years. Uh, we're heading into a January, 2024. It will be an annual kickoff for all our employees to set our mission um really our north star for the year what we expect and it's going to be called um, beyond 2024 we just sent the teaser out um when we were smaller uh everyone got together face to face uh, on a cruise and and kicked off the year as you scale you can't do that but you want to be able to maintain the elements so this year we're going uh into a really um high-tech virtual kickoff and then what we do is we delineate and then each function does their own um, subsets of those throughout the year to make sure that it, the message really gets passed and that we're right, we're working on the right priorities and so forth. So those annual kickoff activities leading into face-to-face -face meetings um, as we kind of are getting, getting back into that are really important. And so, yes, we're remote first, but people do want to see each other. They do want to collaborate um, and they want to be able to do it as you scale in these departments that really um, they understand what are they doing? Um, where does their work have the most value to what you're trying to achieve uh, from a one password standpoint? We onboard, um, that's another activity. We onboard every Wednesday, very interesting. Not Monday, uh, we do a three day onboarding um, because it's, it's intense. We have a lot of systems, a lot of tools. There's a lot of people to meet. Uh, and we do kind of a pre-onboarding, get all the swag out, get everyone ready, do all the letters, the welcome letters from the CEO and so forth. And then we say, we need you to think about just three days straight of just entrenching yourself in one password, the tools and so forth. And then throughout that period after that, there are check-ins from an onboarding process. And then obviously individuals get into their jobs and we're constantly iterating on that process to make sure that we are very intentional about what we expect of people from a values perspective. And part of that is an obligatory meeting with our founders. Our founders still meet monthly uh, with all our new hires. Um, and it's really, really important. We do things like Donut, which is like, uh, I have meetings with employees as we're scaling. It just randomly selects who you want to meet and get to know people. Because you you start to, as you scale, start to work within your function and you need to ensure that you're cross collaborating. Um, and then we do a lot of a lot of activities across the company a lot virtually, a lot through our ERGs from a diversity perspective. So those are just a few examples that um, we think make us special. I, I'm, I'm kind of known for my work around leadership development, but it's because Gallup and LeadX research shows that about 70% of the variance to employee engagement comes from who our manager is, right? So you join a company, you might leave a bad manager. <clears throat> and so I think frontline management support training is, is critical. And I'm curious um, for one password because you know many people who I interview, they're in a large company and they've got whole teams of people just focused on manager training leadership development. And I'm assuming that's not a luxury you have just yet. Um, so tell me about how you're making sure the frontline leaders who are responsible for, for more people, more souls than anyone else in, in the organization, 
how are they getting the skills and the support that they need? We're actually, Kevin, in a very privileged position. Um, I have a relatively large team. I, I come from businesses that are actually not, the bulk of my career is not necessarily in tech. It's obviously in the HR field. Um, in tech, I think it is very much more hands-on from a people perspective. Uh, and we actually have a small and mighty team that we call employee experience that focuses on engagement, focuses on leadership, leadership development. So we are actually doing things uh, that very large companies uh, that I've worked in have done. So I think that's, that's a great indicator of the investment we make in our people. We do monthly meetings with all our 90 plus managers across the company regular all hands. We do co-development groups. We just launched coaching at scale for all our senior directors and above with better up. I'm really excited to see this pilot and how it can go down because I think coaching is, is essential, um, especially in today's environment and your manager, yes, can coach, but sometimes it's good to have, um, an additional, um, support, uh, to help, uh, individuals. We're actively working on, we, we've done like modules of leadership development. We have the, you know, the typical LinkedIn learning and so forth, but we're actually building custom in-house uh, our own leadership development program. Um, we've also done a ton of work for all our leaders around, we're very proud of what we've done in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, DEIP. We have uh, six uh, ERGs and growing uh, we, we have a great talent pipeline from a diverse perspective, and we do actually do a fair amount of work just on, I would call it, um, sensitivity and, and just ensuring that we're actually operating in a, in a very inclusive environment. We you have, on, and sorry too, the other piece was, uh, we have all our custom work, not just, we started with one password university for our customers. This is interesting for our customers when they're onboarding into the product. And this is like a learning management system. Well, we're also using that in, in the people function as well. So uh, it's the best of both worlds. That's great. You mentioned the employee experience team. So tell me a little bit more about um, how you're capturing voice of employee. We listen a lot. We do a lot of surveys. Uh, we hear, um, you know, we have all the typical tools um, from an engagement perspective, like we, we do uh, our annual uh, we do an annual survey and then a pulse survey to check in. Uh, we have monthly uh, wide AMAs, all company, and then each of our own um, executive team have their own all hands slash AMAs uh, in different in differing formats. Uh, we also do um, a fair number of product, um, I would say all hands where we bring the company together because the product is really centric to our business. So everyone is connecting the dots in that regard. And it's an environment that um, we will launch something and we have to have the humility to be able to say, oh, that was really good. Or maybe that missed the mark and maybe we need to adapt a bit. So we're quite a, we're quite a feedback rich environment. Um, and then from an engagement perspective, we have a whole stream, we measure engagement, and then we, we have actually actions with HR business partners and executive leaders looking at drill downs of engagement by function, because it's kind of not a vanilla approach. There's different needs and different functions. You mentioned the pulse surveys, and I find when I'm talking to chief people officers, it's uh sort of a hot topic of like, well, how often do you pulse? I, I hear people talking about that when they're having little side conversations. So how often are you doing pulse surveys? Well, we do the typical engagement survey, the big one, uh, once a year, and then a, a check-in, which is less qualitative halfway. I come from an environment prior to that in, in tech uh, where we were pulse surveying like every week. And it was, mm. it, frankly, my personal opinion was like, I don't know, like, like it just, became like a check the box. And so we actually went to less frequency, but more in depth where we could take mm -hmm. the data. The other thing we're privileged to have um, from a people standpoint is we have a dedicated people analytics uh, individual, a data scientist wow. uh, who works with us. Um, data informs a lot of what we do. Uh, I was talking to um, someone else the other day and they were saying like, they were actually asking me like, when have you made uh, mistakes in your career? And I said, well, I was thinking about this question and I realized when I made mistakes was because I never 
I took the data and, and I'm an intuitive person and I never took it together. And so that's usually when I figure out I make mistakes and have to learn from them. So it's really good to blend both. Um, data will tell you a story, you have to interpret it. And then you do have to use some type of kind of gut feel for what you want to do. I don't know. I do a lot of these interviews. I don't know that I've ever heard of a thousand person company having a data scientist yet on board. So again, that's really incredible. The investment that the organization is willing, willing to is. make. That's great. It is. That's great. Yeah. We're, we're in a good, um, <clears throat> people ask me why I joined and I said, well, you know, it's for me, it's kind of the sum of my full-time career. I, I believe I can have an impact and have some fun and make some change. And I, believe that this company does really care about their employees uh, and they're in it for the long haul. Uh, when the business, um, when the tech industry started to dip, you all, I'm sure you recall <laughs> last summer, we were on a, we're still on a big hiring spree. But what we decided was to pull back very um, conservatively, continue. Uh, we had less uh, hiring recs and we took in, in, individuals in my team and I said, let's put them on projects, build their skills, the hiring will go back up uh, and we will have better people for it. And so it wasn't like this kind of like stop gap. Okay, let's just get people out and let's move on and then we'll have to hire them again. This company thinks about the future and they think about the importance of people. That's a great position to be in. Great position to be in. Yes. Katya, you've mentioned so many cool things already from the, the surveys, of course, to the orientations that start on Wednesdays and the AMAs, all this stuff is you know specifically related to your culture is there any special initiative or project that you're most proud of or that you want to highlight i would just say um, we're most one of the biggest things we're proud of is our diversity equity inclusion and belonging uh, this journey started with um, our tagline is strong unique voices it started back in late 2021, grassroots led. It's always been a culture of inclusivity, um, but as you scale, you you need to think about it even, even more rigorously. Like even in, like you take a look at your talent acquisition pipeline, like you're really looking at making sure that you have good diversity throughout your pipeline to come back, to come up with the best qualified candidates. Um, and we have built out uh, an entire, we started more with initiatives and a bit of sensitivity training. Now we have um, a report that we report out that we'll soon uh, put into the external market for hiring. Mm. Uh, we have, um, we're, we, we collect data from candidates as well as internal when internal wants to opt in. And the data scientists that we have allows us to build programs. We now have a charter uh, we have an entire work council and then our our employee resource groups are really pillars um and you know we're launching something we're like hey what do you think of this or will this work and so forth so i think that that's one there's many things that i'm proud of my team uh in terms of what they've accomplished but that's one highlight that i think is really important to mention well, and, and it was stood up in in like record time i mean that's after not a lot of time yeah, it's very you, full yeah, things move quickly in scale ups. That's um that that's the that that's an that's relatively new. I mean, I've been in tech for about six years now, and things move fast. So you have to pivot. Um, and there's the beauty of that because it's a great adrenaline rush. But sometimes you have to recharge yourself at the end of the week. <laughs> Maybe speed is your unofficial fourth cultural uh, pillar. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Katya, as you know, this is a short format podcast. We only have a few more minutes, but I want to hit you with a few more fun questions. Uh, you know, imagine you could send a book or some other piece of media to every colleague and they were guaranteed to read it, to consume it. What book would you maybe send everyone? I'm a runner. I started running about six years ago, later in life. Uh, it's like my form of meditation. Uh, so Phil Knight, Shoe Dog. Nike founder uh, is a phenomenal book. It's about grit, about entrepreneurship, about never giving up. You can learn anything from it, both personally uh, and professionally. And you don't have to be a runner to read it. It's just a great story. Great book. And um, I don't know if you saw there's the oh, movie I did. Air oh, yes. about the Air Jordan. And so he has a, you know, a role. <laughs> it's not about him, but it's yeah. he's got a role. I thought that was funny to see see him brought to life in that movie. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's a great story. 
Okay, so here's another fun one. So think about where 1Password is today, where it's going over the next 12 months, the world around us. I give you a magic wand and say, wave the magic wand and all of your colleagues will suddenly get a little better at this one behavior, this one skill. What would you give them? What would you have them do? My people hear me talk a lot about, I say, you need to connect the dots. And so a lot of my job is connecting the dots. So someone brings me something, I'm like, well, have you spoken to this person and this person and this person? And if you do this, this has an impact on this. And so looking at things holistically rather than saying, oh, I'm going to run off and do this and it's going to be done and check the box. And I think that, yeah, like if I had a magic wand and everyone could connect the dots and think about their, their work um, in a cross collaborative holistic way, uh, some things we just might just completely take off the table and other things we might really double down on. And so I think, I think that's something that's super important, especially in the human resources function. That's great. Final question. So with everything going on, what's most exciting to you about what's going on at 1Password right now? I think I would call us kind of the, the we're leading the charge um, in the shift to passwordless, which is really at the forefront for us. Uh, we have innovative products. Um, uh, we work actively with the developer community to build these products into what our offerings would be to both consumers and, and to businesses. I think that we are a mission driven company. So you want to protect the lives of people. And that's what brings people to one password is they're working on stuff that's going to, that's really going to make an impact for the future. Um, and, you know, coming up, uh, coming up and being, you know, being acknowledged for that, like people in the business, you're a customer, when you use when you use the product, you feel we hope safe, and then it just it just extrapolates and, and continues from there. So just the innovation we work with some really, really smart, um, very, I'd say high energy, curious people, and they really want to do the best. And I think that that's a great recipe. I, I love the product that you have today. And I'm looking forward to that day when I can just smile into my phone or my laptop and be granted access to wherever I want to go. You can start if you go in some, some companies uh, already have pass keys. And so we have a a beta product out there. Um, so Love if it. you have like PayPal and Best Buy and so forth, you can do that. And more and more companies are picking it up. And what's really cool about us, I think, is that we're kind of at the forefront of that. And and it is, it's uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cutting edge. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I, I just want to thank you again uh, for your time. You know, I, I said it before we recorded that time's our most valuable asset, so I don't take it lightly. Thanks for keeping my passwords and my data, my devices safe. And um, thanks for creating you know, great culture and sharing some of your, your words of wisdom uh, for your colleagues to learn from uh, as well. Thanks for coming on the program. Oh, thank you for having me, Kevin. It was a real pleasure and much appreciated.